So there are four basic functions that every computer does. There is input, processing, storage, and output. Now we've covered three of these already. We've covered how to process, so how to manipulate the data. We've covered how to store the data using variables. We've covered how to output using things like labels and message boxes as well as console.write line. Now I mentioned these four basic operations because every program that we do in this course is pretty much is going to follow this process. The program is going to ask the user for some form of input. That input is then going to be processed and then stored, the result being stored. And then there's going to be some type of feedback back to the user in some form of output, usually text-based output. Now processing and storage are sometimes combined. And so what we'll usually do is we'll um, call this IPSO model input processing storage and output sometimes we'll just shorten it down to just IPO input processing and output and as I said before every program that we do in this course is really going to follow this process and sometimes it may follow it multiple times and sometimes to varying degrees of depth and complexity so up till now we've covered everything except for input so today what we're going to do is we're going to go through and figure out exactly what input means now We've discussed what output means, which is just the process of data leaving the computer coming out to the user. So information coming out from the computer to the user. Input is just the opposite. It's when information comes from the user into the computer. Now it can of course come in a lot of different forms. You've all used keyboards before. You've used, uh, so keyboards send in text input. Cameras, digital cameras, uh, webcams, they all send in uh, photo input or video, video or visual input and then there's positional input in the form of mice um, also in the form of sometimes like uh, tablet pens and uh, touch screens and all that kind of stuff but then there's other things like uh, Xbox Connect um, that is another form of positional input as well as visual input as well and then there's new forms of technology that are starting to emerge like positional and tracking accelerometers and whatnot so you see th things like this in uh, virtual reality setups like oculus rift which will detect not only what direction the player or which direction the person is facing but also what angle and um and uh, proximity to the actual uh, display device, or well, the, well, no, sorry, not the display device, uh, but to whatever surrounding they're working with. So, this IPSO model kind of follows like this black box process with our input. So we input some type of information. So let's say we have this black box, this magical black box, and we send some information in here. So we send some input in here, and then it does a whole bunch of stuff in here. So this is our processing. And when the processing done, it spits out some form of output. Now, you can think of this as basic, the most basic form that you probably know of is a calculator. We send in some data, let's say 2 plus 1. Inside of here, it does the math. Well, that equals 3. And then on the other side, we see the 3 show up on the screen. That's the most basic form of input that we're going to work with in the processing and the storage, which results from that input. Now, in C Sharp, um, or any programming language, we have to really, you have to think about how that input is used. Now, in what the example that you saw here in the calculator, it only knows one way to really interpret those numbers. Two and a one, they're equal to the numbers. Now, in standard software, it's really up to the programmer what keys represent. So, for example, when you're using Microsoft Word and you type in W, that means show a W up on the screen. However, if you're playing a first-person shooter like Call of Duty or Halo or something like that, when you hit a W, it doesn't mean put a W on the screen, it means walk forward. Or it's same as if you hit S, it means walk backwards. So it's really up to the programmer to decide what do those keys actually do inside the software. So now we're going to go on and we're going to talk mostly about keyboard input in uh, our class. And uh, if you get into more advanced concepts, you can look at other things like positional um, as well as connect and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so what we're going to look at right now is the Windows Form program. The Windows Form program does input in the form of text boxes. And the console does input in the form of console dot read line. 
neither of these should look new to you because we've already used both of these or seen both of these in the recent past. We're going to go, for, go over a few rules and other things before we get into actually figuring out how to use these two devices. But from there, um, they're fairly straightforward to use. There's no real complexity to them. First of all, one basic rule. All input requires a prompt. You've probably heard somebody who says, hey, prompt that person for something. Um, prompt is just another way of asking the user for input or giving them instructions. And sometimes that can come in the form of a full question. Other times it might just be in the form of a label. So for example, if you're looking at a window such as this one, we'll see that on the left hand side here we have a prompt which has the the value first name and right beside there's a text box now me as a user because of my experience with Windows programs I know that I'm supposed to write my first name in that text box because right beside there is the label first name same thing with last name age and gamer score I know that I'm supposed to click that submit button when I'm all done because that's what I've been used to that's the intuitive thing to do down below I'm assuming there's going to be some form of results so in here the prompt is quite simply just a label indicating what to press in a console program that might be a full console to write line that says please enter your first name or please enter your last name please enter your age in any case it's always a two-stage process step number one is ask so you ask for the data step number two is you read in the data it's always a two-stage process now another thing we have to realize is that keyboard input no matter what whether you're using um, a Windows form program or a console program always comes in in the form of a string that's actually pretty significant when you think about it because if you ever want to use that data for something more elaborate or complex than displaying it you're gonna need that data to be other types so for example if you're asking the user for um, their age and their weight because you want to calculate what their BMI is well you can't do that with text you have to actually do something you gotta get that into numerical form well we learned something previously in the last module is that once we get this string data we can convert it into whatever type we want now which method we use is up to us and it depends on the situation sometimes you might use the convert Sometimes you might use cast, and sometimes you might use the uh, try parse, depending on what you're uh, trying to do at that given moment. Um, from after the converting, then you can uh, store it and deal with it however you see fit. So that's the basics of input. In the next modules, we're going to go into how text box works as well as console.readline.